Do you sometimes feel anxious when talking to a pretty girl? Or does having to present at work or in class give you a lot of stress? In the video of today, I'm going to tell you how to deal with social anxiety. But before we start, I have a really big announcement to make. I officially launched the Brains Applied website. Which basically shows you absolutely nothing. But when I was making this video, I was thinking to myself, what's the use of a video on how to deal with social anxiety when people don't know whether they really have social anxiety? So I found something which is called the Leibowitz Social Anxiety Scale. And it's a self-test that you can do to find out if you have social anxiety and how bad it actually is. So go to brainsapplied.com slash social anxiety and you can just fill in 24 multiple choice questions and you will figure out how bad your social anxiety is. It's absolutely free, there is no sign up required and I won't store your data. That being said, welcome to Brains Applied. When you're invited to a party of a friend where you know no one, you might be a bit stressed. Because, well, you don't know anyone, you don't know what to expect, and you don't know what is going to happen. And this will give everyone a bit of stress and might make everyone a bit anxious. And some people handle this with a bit of shyness, other people are even becoming more extrovert. But over time, when you're at a party, the stress will fade away. And the more often you get into these new situations, the less stress you will get. However, some people already build up so much stress that they don't even go to the first party because they're so stressed and so anxious of what will happen. And this is called social anxiety. Social anxiety is different for everyone. Some people are very anxious at parties. Some people are very anxious when talking to girls or when making phone calls or when giving a presentation. And it's unclear where social anxiety exactly comes from, but it is thought to be a mix of genetic and environmental factors. The reason why we think so is that genetics partially define how we handle fear. And this has really big consequences, for example how we vote or how we handle new situations. And because of this reason, people that have social anxiety are more likely to get children with social anxiety. And it's not just because of the genetics, but also because children will unconsciously learn from their parents' anxious behavior. Obviously, this is not the only reason why you might have social anxiety. It can also be an early traumatic event or the parenting style of your parents or because you were raised in isolation. There are many events and factors that might have a stake in your social anxiety. But DSM-5, the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, the big book of the psychologists, defines social anxiety as the following. A persistent fear of one or more social or performance situations in which the person is exposed to unfamiliar people or to possible scrutiny by others. The individual fears that he or she will act in a way that will be embarrassing and humiliating. Exposure to the feared situation almost invariably provokes anxiety, which may take the form of a situationally bound or situationally predisposed panic attack. The person recognizes that this fear is unreasonable or excessive. The feared situations are avoided or else are endured with intense anxiety and distress. The avoidance, anxious anticipation or distress in the feared social or performance situations interfere significantly with a person's normal routine, occupational functioning or social activities or relationships. Or there is a marked distress about having the phobia. The fear, anxiety or avoidance is persistent, typically lasting 6 or more months. The fear or avoidance is not due to direct physiological effects of a substance or a general medical condition not better accounted for by another mental disorder. Some people use drug or alcohol or even medication to overcome their anxiety, but this is obviously not what I'm going to advise you. I'm going to advise you cognitive behavior therapy. 
Social anxiety and anxiety in general has three components. A physiological one, a cognitive one and a behavioral one. The physiological one is your unconscious bodily reactions. For example, when you get stressed, your palms become sweaty, mom's spaghetti, your heart rate rises, your blood pressure rises as well, and you can't really do anything about it. The cognitive part is your thoughts. It's what you are thinking and what is in your mind. And the third part is obviously how you behave. The physiological part is, as I said, unconscious and therefore also pretty hard to change. So we will focus on the cognitive and the behavioral part. The first thing that you should do is try to catch your negative thoughts and try to rationalize them. For example, you're walking through the street and as you walk past a group of people, you hear them laughing. And if you're uncertain, you might start to think that these people are laughing with you. Hold your negative thoughts and think about it. Why would these people laugh with you? specifically with you. When you are walking through the street or through the city center, how many people do you really consciously pay attention to? Like how they behave and what they look like. You don't pay attention to that many people, right? So why would those people really pay attention to you right there, right now? This is something about which I have made a movie before and it's called the spotlight effect. And it states that because we don't know what other people are thinking, we automatically tend to think that they are thinking the same as what we are thinking. But this does also mean that when we feel uncertain about ourselves or about a certain aspect of ourselves, for example about our appearance, we will also think that other people are thinking the same as us and seeing the same as us. Because people who are suffering from social anxiety are only focusing on what is going wrong and on their own negative thoughts, they are making their anxiety even worse. And don't just be like, oh, from now on, I'm only going to think positive, because this does not work. Try to stop your negative thoughts, catch them, rationalize them, and slowly, step by step, you will become more realistic and also more optimistic. To give you another example, people with social anxiety that have to present always rate themselves as doing worse than other people. However, when other people have to rate the person with social anxiety and people without social anxiety, they will not see any quality difference for the presentation. If you have been in a situation that made you anxious, you can also write a reflection about how you felt and why you think you felt this way. A reflection in which you try to rationalize your thoughts and in which you also focus on the positive things that happened. The behavioral part of the treatment comes down to this. When you are in a situation that makes you anxious, you will have certain kinds of safety behaviors. Safety behaviors are these little things that you do just to feel a bit safer, to distance yourself from the situation. For example, when you're talking to a cute girl, you might avoid making eye contact. Or when you're at a party and you want to say something, you say it so, so softly that no one really hears you because you don't want people to laugh with you. Try to identify these safety behaviors and try to avoid them when you come across this situation again. And the last part of the treatment is something called systematic graduated exposure. People always tell us to face our fears. However, what they always forget to say is that when you just dive in head first, you might make your anxiety even worse if you fail. So what I want you to do is to grab pen and paper and to write down all the situations that make you uncomfortable. And then you give them a rating from 0 to 10 to indicate how stressed these situations make you. With 0 being there is no stress at all and 10 being I'm so nervous that I am going to puke. After that you just start with the easiest situation. The situation will be just the easiest to improve and the confidence that you gain can be used in more difficult situations. So start with the easiest things like asking a stranger on the street for directions or making a phone call. And while you are doing so, try to rationalize your thoughts and don't forget 
to stop your safety behaviors. And if this is already a step that is too big for you, maybe you should try to practice some relaxation techniques. Or you can practice the situations in your imagination or by role playing, for example, with your best friend or your therapist. Practicing these situations in advance is an easy start and it will prepare you for your real life interactions. So in summary, rationalize your thoughts, stop your safety behaviors and face your fears. But don't just dive right in, take it easy. And that is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, press the like button. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new movie. And I will see you guys later.